Hey there everyone, so we have already done the raw coding test of DeepSeek version 3.1. In this video, we'll be testing the agentic capabilities of this model. We'll be asking it to generate website, games, and also debug some code bases. It will be competing against GPT-5 High because it is one of the good agentic coding models. So let's get started. Towards my left, you can see I have GPT-5. The reasoning effort is set to high. And towards my right, we have DeepSeek version 3.1. Again, we have set the reasoning effort to high. And also I have set the provider to fireworks, which seems to be a very good provider. So in this first test, what they have to do is they have to build a multi-page production ready website for an educational consultancy firm. All the required assets, images and details are present in the code base. They have to read it, understand which one to implement where and come up with a beautiful production ready website. It will be a multi-page website. So we'll see how they do that. The prompt is visible in front of you. You can pause and have a look at it. So let's send this prompt to both models and we'll see the responses. So we'll be also able to, you know, see the total cost of the models, which will be present over here. So you can see DeepSeek is actually very fast. It has read the necessary files and already come up with a to-do list, whereas GPT-5 is still thinking. And it's nice. It's not that bad. So in the to-do list, we can see that it is talking about various category pages, detail pages, contact, testimonials pages and all that stuff. So we'll approve this. Well, if you talk about DeepSeek, we can see that we don't see the model thinking actually, but I have enabled the reasoning effort to high and that is what we can do. The DeepSeek in their X post did mention that, you know, this model takes less time to think. So finally, GPT-5 has come up with a very big and detailed to-do list you can see. So the to-do list is more or less the same, but some things that are different is, you know, it adds SEO metadata like title description and all of that stuff to all pages. So let's approve this and let it run. So you can see DeepSeek is kind of getting into some issues. The model is saying, I noticed there are encoding issues in the files. Let me create a completely clean courses.html file. So this is something that it has been doing for quite some time now. I think it is stuck in a loop or something. Let's see if it's actually able to exit this loop and move ahead. Okay, everyone. So both are done with their generations. You can see that DeepSeek has used two and two dollars and seventeen cents, whereas GPT-5 High has used one dollar and thirty-eight cents. DeepSeek could have been cheaper, but uh, you know it stuck in a loop and was continuously iterating over that. That is the reason the price went up, even though it is significantly cheaper than GPT-5. Well, now let's look at their responses. Starting off with DeepSeek. Well, this is the website that it has generated. You can see Acme Educational Services. It has tried to implement the images. You have these SVG implementations over here. Let's look at testimonials and uh, nothing is visible actually guys. We have testimonials for each person, but that is not visible over here. And as you can see, there is Chinese letters over here. Even this, you can see. We have a start your journey button over here, but that is not working. If we move on to the courses page again, you can see we have the title explore our courses, but nothing is visible. We have a link for get free consultation. Let's click it. Okay. So it is not clicking. Also have a look at this guys. Even this section was not clearly implemented. That is the reason we are seeing it like this in the testimonials as well. You can see Chinese letters. The about page is comparatively better, but again, even in the bottom, you can see we have this Chinese letters all in all guys. I have to say it's a very bad implementation. The website completely looks janky and kind of not in proportion. I'm not very satisfied with what DeepSeek has come up with, but we will give it another chance. I'll tell you how it is later in this video. Having said that, let's move on to GPT-5's response. So this is the website GPT-5 has generated. So now you can see right off the back, it looks significantly better. We have an option to actually, you know, search the particular course. So let's try something. We'll try MBBS and let's see what happens when we search. So it shows explore course categories but it doesn't open up the particular course. You can see all the course categories are beautifully implemented. The images are in right proportion. I personally like this. I personally like this testimonial section. You can see it has come up with a carousel and it looks very nice. We have frequently asked questions and even that is implemented very nicely. Let's click in any course category. So if, if we click medical courses, we can see all the courses which are present within. I think the images are kind of uh, too much wide. They could have been taller and that would have looked even better. But yes, we are able to see each course. We are able to see its duration and stuff. If we click carrier prospects, we are able to see more details about the courses. I will have to say it's not the best implementation that I've seen yet, but it looks good. Way better than what DeepSeek has given. Let's move on to FAQ. So it says your questions answered. Talk to an expert and explore courses. So all the questions are mentioned over here. 
if you move on to testimonials it is present here one thing i have to say that all the testimonials and faq sections are already present in the main page but still we have dedicated pages for them it can be a bit inconsistent in that let's click free consultation and you can see this is the form that it has come up with i think the current stream drop down didn't have the css implemented because this doesn't look that good all in all guys if we do a side by side comparison i think uh, gpt5 is better i mean miles better although it is it has done the job being even cheaper nearly a dollar cheaper compared to deepseek so clearly a win for gpt5 high and i mean i am having doubts about deepseek but we'll have to do more testing we'll see how things goes in the next question okay so in this particular question we have given them an empty code base and what we are asking it create a complete fully featured chess game that has great visuals and all the functionalities so they can pick whichever library they want because it is an empty code base and there is no restrictions okay everyone so both have generated the chess game deep seek has taken 17 cents and gpt5 high has taken 22 cents by the way guys gpt5 high takes a lot of time to think and you know get the job done and i doubt the total price might be even higher because that is not being shown over here but i think it could be even higher having said that let's look at the generations of both models starting off with deep seek so this is what it has generated you can see the board but uh, I, we don't see the pieces so we'll give it a chance we'll say that i don't see the pieces please fix it so we'll share it and uh, let's look at gpt5's response so this is what gpt5 has generated if you look at the svg implementations it is not accurate i mean we are able to understand these pieces but other than that you know the rest of the pieces are not very highly detailed kind of okay but not absolutely the best let's actually try to play something so i can select the pieces but uh, i think i have to select and move it so if i move the pieces it is registered but uh, visually we don't see it it still stays in its initial position i think it's black stern and i'm trying to move you can see i'm trying to move the d7 pawn but it is kind of showing up in other place likely in g6 so clearly it's not correctly implemented so we'll give it gpt5 a chance as well so we are saying instead of drag and drop i want click and move the pieces and also when i move the pieces they are not moving so let's see okay everyone they have come up with their updated responses i have given a chance to both of them let's see if things have fixed so this is deep sea's response we have refreshed it and you can see nothing has actually changed we don't see the pieces yet let's move on to gpt5's response so if you look at gpt5's response you can see i select the pieces it vanishes and even if i drag and drop them nothing is happening i'm sure that with multiple iterations you can actually build games that is true with any modern llm if you are determined you can actually do good generations but the thing we are testing is how efficient they are and how quickly they come up with responses so you can see in this particular case both were not able to give us a satisfactory response i'll have to give a fail to both of them and with this we are done with agentic code generation next we'll be testing agenti code editing so in this particular testing what we are going to do is i have opened up a code base which has the rgji data set and has an application around it but i have implanted two bugs in two different files one is in server.py and another is in openrouter.py we have to see if these models are able to find those bugs and fix it i'll be telling you if they were successful or not having said that let's send this to both models and we'll see how they perform so now you can see gpt5 high is still thinking whereas deepseek has actually found out first bug it says there is a hidden twist that after the eighth comparison it starts returning false or odd sized grids so this was in server.py and it was able to find it out now let's see if it's actually able to find out the error in openrouter.py okay now actually gpt5 high has started to make edits and it has already made edits to server.py and it's also making edits to openrouter.py so it seems that it has actually found out the two bugs but we'll understand more when we'll see its results okay everyone so gpt5 is done and it has fixed the issues as it says it has used 74 cents and it, and it says that it has fixed a logic that secretly inverted correct results after enough comparisons so it made this fix in server.py after that it removed a transformation that detected a grid in the response and silently rewrote it so this issue was in open router api.py and it was able to fix that as well so gpt5 was was able to find 
both of the implanted bugs and was able to fix it. DeepSeek is still working on the same server.py file instead of reading the open router api.py but we'll let it run and see if it fixes both the issues. Okay so finally DeepSeek is done and you can see it has made all the changes in server.py but didn't go into open router.py. So we'll ask is there any bugs in, in any other files. Let's see. You know through this test what you are finding out is how good are these models and you know navigating the whole code base and different files okay so on prompting the model was able to find out the error in open router api.py it says open router api client contains a malicious code that automatically transposes grids when it detects a square grid so this is the error which we have in open router and it was able to find it out and now finally deepseek is done so both were able to find out the issues and fix it but gpt5 was able to do it in a single prompt whereas we needed double prompts for deepseek let's do one more test for the agentic bug fixing so this is the another test this is the chess bench application if you have seen my live streams you would be knowing about it so in this particular test we'll be going one by one We'll starting off with DeepSeek version 3.1 for starters we'll just say to start the application so this is kind of a vague prompt but the model has to scan the code base and understand the best way to start it up the best way is using the start.sh script which is present inside the code base so now you can see it is installing all the dependencies which is actually a nice thing to do and after that it should start the application using start.sh and you can see that is the exact thing it is doing and you can see the application has actually started now let me actually try to play a game and i'll show you what is the error so you can see if i click start game you can see the game doesn't work it has failed to fetch also we have one more error you can see this red bar over here and has a number in it so it should increment whenever the model is making an illegal move but currently it increments in every legal move so that error also has to be fixed having said that even in the terminal you can see there is a problem with closing parentheses so let's see if DeepSeek is actually able to fix all these issues and make the game run so even before we are giving any special prompts to you know fix the error or anything like that it is trying to find out any issues or errors in the application I think it has been able to find one of the issues it says I can see the exact statement has a syntax error with mispatch parentheses so now you can see we are starting to see the pieces exactly how it should be and you can see the other issue is not yet fixed one move was made from white and the illegal counter incremented in a legal move that should not have happened so let's see if DeepSeek is automatically able to find it out or not so okay it says task completed and issues have been fixed so we didn't do any kind of special prompting but now we can do that so we are saying there are still some errors in the application find and fix them all so let's see if this way it is able to find out the bugs okay well this is interesting you can see it is making a curl command but uh, it is full of Chinese letters neither our code base or anywhere else we are using Chinese letters if it was a Chinese code base it would be making sense but here there is no use of it and it seems to be pretty random so this is something that you should be aware of and using DeepSeek model it can get into issues like this okay everyone so we gave a chance to DeepSeek but it was not able to actually fix the issue and you can see a move has been played and the counter still increments so i think we have to directly mention that you know fix the illegal counter let's see if this direct prompting helps it to fix it okay everyone so finally deep seek is done it has taken a lot of steps guys you can see it has used three dollars and 17 cents to get it i'll talk about it later but let's see if the issue is fixed at all or not so we'll start a match and we'll see if the illegal counter increments so most likely we should see a move and now you can see a move was made but there is no increment of illegal counter it was able to fix it but it took a lot of steps guys it was very inefficient in getting the work done and coming back to me having said that Let's move on to GPT-5 high. So just like before, we are going to say start the application and let's see how GPT-5 performs in this. Okay, everyone. Now you can see in a single command, it was able to pip install all the required files and requirements.txt and also start the server. So again, let's try to start a match and we'll see if the match runs. So if we click start game, you can see it is not working just like it was meant to be, you know, before the fixes. So now let's proceed and we'll see if even before any kind of prompting is the model able to find out the error and fix it although i have to say it has not used the start.sh script which should have been better because that kind of you know logs the errors and stuff so it would have been easier but in the current method it has started we don't see any kind of issues it says no issues found so that can be a kind of misdirection and makes things difficult for gpt5 but let's see if it's a capable model i think it should be able to fix it and if it does that i'll be impressed okay so for some weird reason it has started using start.sh this time and it is able to see the error do not match opening parentheses so i think now it should be pretty easy for it to fix okay everyone so it was able to automatically fix the 
parentheses issue and make the game running but the illegal counters thing is not fixed so we'll ask it to you know find any errors in the code base and try to fix them let's see i'm saying there are many errors in the application find and fix them so let's see if it's actually able to do that if not then we'll have to give a direct prompt so we can look at the to-do list guys it says fix illegal counters increment logic to count only illegal attempts so in the to-do list it has found it let's see if it's actually able to fix that okay everyone so it says that it has fixed the issues let's actually try this so most probably it should make a move and there should not be increment of illegal counter i guess and there is no illegal counter increment that is nice it was able to fix it so let's stop this and with that we end the testing so what can we say we clearly saw that right off the back gpt5 high was clearly ahead whether it was code generation or it was code debugging yes in the chess game question both didn't perform well but after that in both debugging problems gpt5 was highly efficient deep seek on the other hand you saw that had a lot of issues and it was generating chinese texts which in this context is not right and also one thing that i have to point out is this model is very very inefficient i mean i was asking it to fix the bugs and it was going through the whole code base and doing a lot of tool calls and whatnot and take it was taking a lot of times so i know that the model is very cheap but one thing that you have to notice you know your time is also important you're looking at whatever it is doing and sometimes you have to approve things before they automatically run because you can't just rely on these models to automatically run terminal commands that will absolutely annihilate your code base so having said that time is also a very important thing which deep seek seems to be taking a lot of time you know roaming around the code base doing everything that has not been asked for gpt5 on the other hand valdo was pricier but significantly efficient and it did what it was asked for so personally guys i would not use deep seek for any of my code bases or my projects at least based on the testing that i see we do have cloud code and other cli how is the performance in that will we can look at it i'll see if we are able to make a video on it but based on this testing i don't think deep seek is the one to go i hope i was give, able to give you guys a thorough comparison between these two models and and it will help somehow to make better decisions having said that please do hit the like button and if possible hype this video if you see a option of hyping because that really really helps the channel having said that i'll catch you guys in the next one